Hello and welcome to a new exciting Let's Play of Star Trek Online. I'm your host, the Crimson Phoenix, and today we will be beginning the 2400 series within the Cardassian storyline. And as you may see, uh, we're on a different ship here than uh, the Atlantis. Uh, this ship is actually the USS Paladin. Uh, this is a Prometheus-class starship. Um, it's also known as the um, Heavy Escort uh, ship. And this isn't just any Heavy Escort. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. It's not just any ordinary vessel. Since we are now level 50, I gone ahead and came in here uh, as soon as I find the ship it's probably way down over here this ship is the Hestia is actually the advan the tier 6 um, advanced escort now originally the class of vessel for this is the Hestia class this is a Hestia class as it is but as you know with a lot of ships you're able to um, change the look of the ship as you wish. Are you serious? USS Darkwing Duck? Oh, that is so freaking awesome. Scum dogs and oh wow. <laughs> so I had to look at that. I had to make that one comment about the ship's name. Uh, shout out to whoever to Rain or whoever it is that is in charge of the Darkwing Duck. That is awesome. But uh, anyway, so um, I changed. I took up the stance of making the starship uh, look like the Prometheus class ship. This is actually the original paint job with the original um, uh, windows and, and everything here. Let me actually turn the hood off so you can kind of see a little bit more. Um, so yeah, sorry I can't see too much on that. I can't really zoom out much since I'm in sector space. but. That's okay. We'll be able to see more of this later. Now, do now also a little thing about this. I gone ahead and bought a little bit of uh, Mark 12 th uh, equipment, uh, just one piece. And let me actually go ahead and tell you a little bit about the um, advanced escort. Now, my buddy Tom has already done a little bit, showed a little bit build for the for the advanced escort. Um, on his channel for Doom Sergeant Labs, but I do want to go ahead and you know kind of show y'all from my perspective as well So this is kind of what I got here But one of the uh, thing one of the weapons I got in here is an omnidirectional phaser beam array mark 12 now This thing this omnidirectional phaser beam array allows you to fire in a full 360 degree angle There's no um there, there's no holes um, into where this thing fires and it is pretty cool now the tier 5 advanced escort um, Actually, yeah, let me go ahead and pull that out because it's actually two for because um, There's also in here for tier for the tier 5 version of the advanced escort there is Not multi-mission here. We go the multi-vector advanced escort. Now, the multi-vector advanced escort. For those who may remember um, Star, uh, Star Trek Voyager, um, the I think the the mission, the not mission, the um, the episode is called uh, "Message in the Bottle." It's the episode where the Doctor is transferred onto a Federation starship on the edge of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants, uh, a little bit closer, uh, and, and on a bit of, it was on a bit of a long-range mission, but really the Prometheus, um, USS Prometheus, Prometheus was not only a prototype vessel, but also was supposed to be the next class starship to kind of fight off, fight off the Dominion. However, in that episode, Romulans took over the ship, and of course, the Doctor and a it was like a Mark II EMH had to uh, take the ship, which, yeah. But anyway, the multi-vector ship comes with the multi-vector assault mode thing, which I do have the multi-vector console on here, so this ship is able to separate. Um, as well, the Tier 6 um, Advanced Escort also comes with the High Energy Plasma um, Exposer, which does a plus 20... Um, Tetrion and plasma da uh, d uh, damage resistance uh, plus two energy power settings, and 
Uh, comes with a uh, few, uh, a few of it, uh, a little bit of its own abilities. One of them is the uh, POB, uh, which sorry, PBAOE plasma damage each second. Uh, this is the Firebringer, which is going to be that ability right there. And it applies and also applies to vec uh, to uh, multi vector opponents. Um, and this thing pretty much activate, and pretty much uh, this thing sends out like a um, a wave of plasma, burning plasma energy. Uh, now it does also have a little thing called Firebringer Flare, but the Firebringing Flare only activates when, uh, as you see here, when activating Command Bridge um, Officer abilities, it activates the Firebringer Flare, which does additional plasma damage now this and now these two consoles as well cool thing about them is they're also a little bit of a two-piece set so if we scroll down way far down here we go um, advanced escort weaponry which with this it does a plus 10 all that da energy damage plus a plus two uh, 2.5 critical chance so it is it, it's a really good ship as you see we um also has you know it's own little mastery which is numerical superiority which that starship trait as you can see um is you get a, per, a plus um to uh, you get a plus 10 to 50 percent all damage based on number of allies targeting this your target so if you have a full team of five that's a plus 50 percent all damage um, not only for you, but as well as for anybody on your team. Yeah, sorry, I had to take a drink. And again, that's only if you're targeting the same person um, all together, or if you if you are one person targeting the same person, blah blah blah. Um, the starship masteries on here are pretty much kind of the same as most as all escort type vessels, which is. Um, Mastery 1 is a plus 5% in accuracy. Mastery 2 plus 5, well, and 5 in defense. Um, plus 10% in energy damage and connect damage. And Mastery 4 plus 2.5 critical chance. What the hell? Hello. Let's see. Hello, such do knock ein. Flota, German. It, it, who the he which which is the German? Oh, it's like what the hell? Uh, shout out to that guy, Cornell Zenvers on the RRW. Well, Trump puts. Sorry, fella, I do not speak German. I'm pretty sure that's that's German. Hello, uh, let's see. Hello, such as do not ein flotte. I'm pretty sure that's German. I have no idea what it's saying. Okay, we're going on with second wave, which second wave that is that is the beginning of the new. Um, well, not exactly new, but this but second wave is the beginning of the next um, series of um, fleet of uh, feature episodes, and I'll be getting to that a little bit more. So we got a report to Commander Andrews, which I know we were talking to. Um, the one person we were talking, we were talking to one commander person earlier. Um, yeah, we got commander, uh, uh Serge Mina there. And then we got here, commander Karen Andrews. Welcome to DS9. I'm commander Karen Andrews, Captain Carlin's first officer. He asked me to inform you that he's been delayed dealing with an incident in Cargo Bay 3. Oh wow! So there is, is, is so they stop. Uh, I forgot that they stopped the little thing right there. I don't know why they did that. Anyway, 
unfortunately we won't be a uh, able to begin the conference until Captain Carolyn is available. I wonder would you be willing to track down the other attendees and inform them of the delay. I can send a junior officer, but I thought this way you get a chance to meet the, uh, the delegates before for, uh, formal talks begin. Every little bit of connection or information helps in a diplomatic situation. Yeah, we're going to go... Um, find and meet all the delegates now for those who may not remember or may not have seen my last uh, let's play where um, I w gave a little bit of explanation about what's going on here um, as you can see at the B at the right hand side where it says attend the board conference so let me go ahead and give you everybody a little bit more backstory um, before this featured episode here, before the 2400, and again, you'll find out the name of 2400 a little bit soon enough, um, and as well as the reason for the name of the mission, um, before the featured episodes, at least I think my time ran is right, anyway, before the featured episodes, there used to be, uh, there, there used to be, uh, where is, I'm supposed to go this way, um, there used to be, and still is going on now, um, random red alert st uh, things that would pop up whenever you're flying around sector space. They still occur even now. I'm looking forward to the conference and what your government has to say about the Borg. And yeah. While I agree the Borg are indeed a threat, I'm not entirely clear as to what you expect the Ditapa Council to do about it. If you will remember... We dismantled our military after the Dominion War, and only maintain a small force for planetary defense. Those ships you may have seen were stolen from my government by the true way. Regrettably, Starfleet has yet to put a stop to their campaign of... Being here on Deep Space Nine reminds me of my mentor, Gul Mavek, um, who was stationed here during the Dominion occupation. During his time here, he came across a peculiar drink, but Joran distilled Kanar. Apparently, during the Cardassian occupation, the soldiers wanted their favorite libation, but there was not enough Kanar in the shipments from home. So these resourceful young officers conscripted a group of Bajorans, mostly from the religious houses, to distill Kanar for them. The Kanar from Bajor has a different color and flavor from the best Cardassian vintages because of the local ingredients used in its distillation. Nevertheless, many of the officers who drank it developed quite a taste for this Bajoran pleasure. It is impossible to find a similar vintage on Cardassia Prime, and I want to present a bottle to my mentor and friend, Gul Mavek upon my return to the home world. It would mean so much to him, and I would be most grateful to anyone who could assist me in this small task. See if I can find any. And yeah, that happens. Okay, so we gotta go look and see about trying and ask around looking for some uh, distilled canar. Anyway, so anytime when you're flying around sector space, and even now, um, at any level, You'll see a little rare alert thing pop up. Now, let me actually pull up the galaxy map for this little explanation. Now, between um, Japori to uh, Hatoroya, the rare alert thing is mainly for um, the events. Go uh, event. Uh, actually, no, wait. I'm sorry. From Japori to Gatora, down to Mempa, all the way to Zarentine. No, wait, it's just between these three sectors. I'm sorry. Between these three sectors, or at least here in the Azure, whenever the Rail Alert um, thing would pop up, um, it would be because of a Tholian task force that is in the Azure Nebula that you have to fight. But anywhere else within Federation to Romulan space, to, through Klingon space, even through Cardassia and Breen space, Whenever a red alert thing would pop up in those other sectors, that would be you having to fight um, the Borg. Now, and w and that had had been there for a while, and then 
over at Defera, I think I believe I did mention this before in my previous part, but in Defera, Defera is currently also fighting the Borg, trying to prevent the Borg from assimilating their home planet. As to how the Borg got there, well that's easy, transwarp technology. So that's that, and in this portion, and when the and when these missions had came out, let's ask this person first. And look, I swear. Um, when uh, when when the twenty four hundred series came out, you, um, this was basically the first thing, mission that came up. You having to uh, to discuss with the. Most, most of the powers about the we await um, the word of the emissary. You, you had to speak with everybody, uh, uh, yeah, with with the majority of powers, to um, to uh, to uh, to discuss the uh, Borg threat. Let's go ahead and enter Quark's bar here, and here Quark's oh, is also in the little thing. mission that we get to do, but um. I'll be able to do that here in a second. something, friend? Opportunity plus instinct equals... Okay, so we got Bajoran Distill Kinar. Okay. Now, before we even be, uh, go and take this to the Cardassian Ambassador, let's also talk to the Deferon Ambassador here. Greetings. My name is Sarab, and I speak for the Deferi. Until recently... My people isolated ourselves from the rest of the galaxy in an attempt to remain neutral. We seek balance in all things, and therefore choose not to take sides in conflicts that do not concern us. The Borg, however, threaten everyone. My own world has been scarred by the Collective. I look forward to hearing your thoughts about how we can deal with the Borg when the conference convenes. And then when the course. I understand. I must find something to do with my free time. I had been hoping to spend some time in one of the hollow suites here. Several people have recommended them, and there is an historical hollow program, the Matara Nebula, that I have been eager to play. Could you help me gain access to a hollow suite? An hour or two would be more than sufficient. So I can do the, uh, there should be a way to get a reservation for you. Yeah, that's the second um, little mission you can do, um, which uh, which, you know, which is basically to see about getting the deferring ambassador a um, old suite. Need something, friend? Sleeve. Opportunity plus instinct equals profit. Okay, do the whole suites are book solid for the next week. If you ha if you hadn't noticed, this place is busy. Add in all of the ambassadors, diplomats, and admirals and such here. For the Borg thing, I'm mostly to decide to expand. The old tailor shop has been empty for years. Really? Oh yeah, Garrick's tailor shop. What had has been, what or would be, uh, empty for a while. Anyway, a Ferengi without profit is no Ferengi at all. Right. Now here's the part where we get to um, talk around. Let's start with that bar patron. But yeah, um, as well, um, anytime anybody visits here at uh, DS9, wants to get a chance to talk with Morn. Morn, Morn, I can really use your advice. Really, I never thought about it that way. Any good gossip? I'll play a few rounds of Dabo. Where have you been all this time? Oh yeah, here's basically what happens. Morn looks off into the distance, wondering where to begin. He swirls his drinks as he prepares his amazing tale. Hours later, Orm picks up his drink, throat incredibly dry. 
He gives you a knowing nod and returns his attention to the bar. That was... <laughs> Yeah, back to yeah, yeah, back to try trying to find the house, sweet. Go away, don't want any company. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, last person though, uh, and this is not, and this isn't is gonna be crazy, our patron. I see. I do. I'm going to use the house to help demonstrate all the wonders of. Quality self-sealing stem bowls to a very important potential customer. Between you and me, those things are harder to move than you might think. Your reservation in trust in making a deal? I need to sell my entire inventory or my profits this month will be way off projects. That's why I reserve the whole suite. I need to make a great impression on this customer. But if you bought all the stem bolts, then I could cancel my meeting and catch the next shot out here. Yeah, this is where we have to find somebody who may be able to take in Zar, that's the person's name. Um, uh, take their stem bolts. Luckily, I know exactly who to go to. Um, an easy way to do the uh, to do this little mission to um, take care of the stem bolts, uh, you you want to go over to Captain Sean. Now we have seen him and the USS Belfast um, Defiant Clash starship a um, few times here, and here he is, Captain Sean. You kept your head in that tricky situation in the Iconia system. Good to have people like you on our side. Oh well, they did update his thingy. And I'm glad there's someone else here who's faced the Borg in battle. We have a perspective the rest of these full-time diplomats don't. Okay. So, two things we can do. We can do this, where you do need a large quantity of stem How many do you bolts. have? My chief engineer has been looking for stem bolts for weeks. He wants to do some upgrades to the Belfast. And the Defiant class has always been a little touchy. Sometimes it's best to use what works. Even if the technology's a little out of date. We've made inquiries with several traders, but everyone we talked to dumped their inventories after the speculation bubble burst. Some Ferengi out there made a small fortune a few months ago cornering the stem bolt market, but now that supply is gone. I was hoping to find some here. All right, so we got that, but as well as another thing we can we can um, can do as well. And I'm glad there's someone else. Tell I hope the that. problem's not too serious. That's unfortunate. I was hoping to get some assistance from DS9 to deal with some issues on my ship. We've been on deep space patrols for more than a month, and this is the first chance we've had to get back to a real starbase. My ship needs repairs, and I'm running out of spit and wishes to hold her together. Well, I'm a crew's at disposal. Any assistance you need? I appreciate the offer. My crew could really use a few extra hands to get the work done. But if you need your officers to do something else, I understand. I'll talk to Commander Andrews to see if she has anyone who can help. Uh, there's at least three that, that we can do. This is the third mission thing we have to do here. So, first one, and yeah, they all t uh, take about, I think, like about yeah, five minutes to do. Um, so, it's a little big idea to wait till you do them. First one's going to be install new ship components, which uh, my game has already compiled the people to do that. Next one's going to be review sensor logs. And then uh, poli uh, police crew on leave, which they're all going to be a success. All of them's going to take about five minutes or so. And when they are done, yeah, let me see if I need to talk you to kept your head, And I'm glad there's someone else here who's. I appreciate the. Okay, never mind. So when that is done, which is going to be within about five minutes, um, then. Will be and uh, then uh, you know that's not gonna and then that's that bit's done and it's a little bit best to go ahead and wait on that so that way um you uh, that that way uh you know just to kind of get things a little bit finished here speaking of getting things finished let's go ahead and take it and take over the uh, distill canar over to the Cadassian um, person and then we'll go over trying to make a trade over with um. Uh, Hadron. So, I'm looking forward to the conference and what your 
If you will remember, we dismantled our military after the Dominion War. Oh, wonderful! Gull Mavek will be so pleased with this gift. Thank you for your assistance. If at some point I can assist you in return, all you need to do is ask. Definitely. So that is completed. Um, and yeah, one thing I want to say is a good idea to wait for all the missions to be done with is because of a little accolade, which I believe we get an accolade for this. Just had to wait a little while. So let's go ahead and head over into Quark's bar. I love how everybody just beams in. Let's go and talk Greetings. to the ambassador. My name is Sarah, and I. Oh wait, wait! Forgot we gotta talk to Zao here first. Whoops. Yes, the ship captain wants to acquire your entire stock. And with that, now we talk to Hadron. Need something, friend? A wise man. Okay, now I just need to take care of the reservation opinion. transfer. What reservation transfer fee? Opportunity plus instinct equals profit. There's a minor fee associated with transferring a hollow suit reservations. Never heard of it before. Nothing really, just enough to cover the uh, cover administrative costs. See, that'll be 10,000 gold press platinum, please. Payable immediately. So we got two uh, um, things now. Technically speaking, I don't have the gold press platinum. I only got twenty, but game doesn't really care much. So you have the two, two choices: say, hey, hey, I, I have big dabo. Here's ten thousand. Here's ten thousand uh, gold press platinum. Or what? That's an outrage. The riskier the road, the greater the profit. I'll cut you a deal, but don't tell anyone. I don't need wor uh, the word of this getting around. I'll take 2,000 gold press lambs. I'm losing money, but I'll do it for you. So, at this point, you know, if you have the 2,000, you can do, you can, you know, hit that. Otherwise, are you insane? A Ferengi without profit is no Ferengi at all. Fine, 100 gold plus platinum, but that's my final offer. Unfortunately, I don't have gold th that, so. Need something, friend? There's a double table behind you, isn't there? Start playing. So, yeah. At this point, you don't even have to go walk over to the double table. You can just hit Spin play double. Which gives us a little time. And just so people know, this is quite literally the only way you can earn gold press latinum other than like a few um duty officer missions which eh, this has a little bit more to the gambling feel of it usually if there's a lot of people in usually you'll find people playing dabo at like well here at quarks or at uh, drozana station Make the universe go round. You bet 1,000 credits on Dabo. Wow. Thank you for telling me, game. So I know I've hit, uh, I've hit a few times, but I want to uh, want to do like one more. Oh, hey. Like the rewards. Thanks for your help. My ship is running like new again. Great. You have an excellent crew. So that's done. Wait for this. Double! Spend your winnings. 1,000, which that's how you get the 1,000 sometimes. So I'll go with that. Let's try this again. Need something, friend? A Ferengi without profit. It's no. Here's a hundred. And with that, now we go over to the ambassador. My wonderful. Most of the mm, holo technology on Defera is there. used for training or utilitarian purposes, so I don't have many chances to use a holo suite for entertainment. 
Thank you for your assistance. I hope you didn't go through too much trouble on my account. No, not too much trouble. Just had to try and sell off. I don't remember how many stem bolts there were. It was the person's entire stock. I think if I remember correctly, it was like 50,000 stem bolts or something or 5,000 stem bolts. I don't even remember. It was a large quantity of self-sealing stem bolts, which is ironic in a sense because I don't remember the name of the episode. Let's go and talk to Stas. Ah, I was informed you would be here. Have you come with another friendly reminder from Commander Andrews? Feel free to report back to her and let her know that I haven't eaten the furniture or scared away the Dabo players. Not yet, anyway. By the way, this is somebody everybody's going to be uh, probably seeing a, lot, a little bit a lot of. Uh, this is Ambassador Stas. Yes, by the way, I said Ambassador. He is a Gorn. Uh, he is a Gorn, but an Ambassador for the Klingon Empire. That is troubling. My ship is waiting to return to Kronos as soon as these talks are completed. I have no wish to linger here any longer than is necessary. Sorry right, to trouble that... you again, but Captain Curlin is wrapping up the problem in the cargo bay, and we will be able to begin the talks very soon. I've notified the other attendees, but our opening speaker isn't responding to hails. Could you please track him down for me? Admiral Zavglach Trem mentioned wanting someplace quiet. You might try the upper promenade or the temple. Well, he's probably going to be at the temple. Anyway, before I even continue, that's one thing I do want I uh, do want to uh, do, and that's get that in there. I forgot I had all that energy, all those energy credits, and forgot that I needed to um, put them back into the bank. So, uh, I don't remember the episode, but it was an episode where. Um, it was when Nog wa uh, was in Starfleet. He was assigned. He was on DS9 um, as part of uh, Chief O'Brien's. Before we talk to this person, he was part of Chief O'Brien's um, engineering crew. And O'Brien had like a like a bunch of like a, li a list of things they needed to get done. Um, and in order to get something done, I forgot what it was. I think it has something to do with a Defiant or something or another. I can't remember. Nog goes into... into No, wait, wait, wait. Wrong episode. Sorry. It's when... It's the episode before Nog went into Starfleet. But he and he and Jake were trying to obtain... A um, it was like a baseball card or something, and they had to sell, and, and they had to sell, um, self-sealing stem bolts in order to get a like part or some sort of chemical or something for the guy that had the uh, that had the card. I don't remember the entire episode much. All I remember is it has something to do with Nog, that that, that good Ferengi, and may have been with Jake. I don't remember. Anyway, let's talk to the Admiral. Yes. My apologies, both to you and Commander Andrews. It's not often that I get some time to myself these days. Captain Curland offered me the use of his office. But I came here instead for some peace and quiet. Peace. It's in far too short of supply these days. I've been in Starfleet for a long time. I've seen more battles than I care to remember. But this one, there's no reasoning with the Borg. There's no chance for a nonviolent solution. 
I only hope that we can unite before they come for us. No one is safe. That's definitely true. All right, so now we get we get to take a turbo lift. We can take any turbo lift we want um, up to the conference, which the conference room is basically the war room, as we as lots of people may remember from DS9. So before we do this, give me. One second here. Something I need to pull. Uh, I need to uh, pull up on my uh, on my second screen here. Give me just one second, y'all. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our seat. So I had to, I had to look up something because there is a little bit of diplomatic stuff that we have that we have to go through Welcome, here. Welcome, everyone. I'm so pleased that you all agreed to join us here today. As many of you are all too aware, the Borg attacks are increasing. If they are left unchecked. Starfleet predicts that the entire Alpha Quadrant could fall within three years. We all must work together to push these invaders out of our space and protect our homes and families. I do not agree. My empire will stand with or without your assistance. The Klingon Empire has never been stronger than it is right now. I dare the Borg to challenge us. Starfleet may cower in fear before a bunch of machines, but we do not. Mm. I'm sure what the esteemed ambassador from the Klingon Empire meant to say is that he hopes we are all so crippled by our efforts to stop the Borg, we will be no match for a battle-hardened Klingon fleet. I do not want to be assimilated, but I don't want to be a servant to the Klingon Empire either. The Deferi believe that all things must be in balance. We cannot counter the Borg threat if we ourselves are counter to one another. The Deferi do not wish to act against any of you. Therefore, should this meeting not reach a consensus, our best course of action is to not act at all. Starfleet will do what it must to protect the Federation. However, if you want our assistance, you need to be willing to protect yourselves and contribute to this campaign. <laughs> yeah. The Borg will be stronger if any of your civilizations are assimilated. Starfleet's hard at work developing new technology and tactics. We, at least, will be ready. And if we can't cooperate, I hope you don't suffer. And that we develop new weapons in time. This is getting us nowhere. We came together in the spirit of cooperation. We need to find common ground. I find funny how um, Curlin is the only one within a now, um, did you have something you wanted to add to this discussion? Uh, uniform. So let's go ahead and start one by one from the list I have here, because there's actually a little list on. Um, on the SEO game uh, Gamepedia site, um, but I'm gonna show you show you all the way to do this. Um, if you're not a uh, rank four diplomat like I am on my main, so let's start with Ambassador Skyle uh, from Cardassia. Um, Cardassia will be weakened if your government does not participate in this accord. Cardassia Prime is still rebuilding from the Dominion War. We have achieved a great deal in the past decades, but there is still much more to do. The continued threat of the true way makes progress difficult. It would be best if we reserve our limited resources. I will not weaken my world to defeat the Borg 
only to become the victim of another power already here in the Alpha Quadrant. So, the one here is actually is of course a failure. But if you're a diplomat, you can either do we hope to minimize casualty by working together against the board. This will lock. That's the diplomacy, which is an automatic success. Diplomacy is always an automatic. Otherwise, what about your family? What will happen to them if the Borg invade Cardassia Prime? I will protect my home until my last breath. My people do not need to be distracted by having to concern ourselves with all of you. Perhaps keeping ourselves separate is the best protection we could have. And then, of course, you see mission complete. Rugan, without the help of the Cardassians, we will be a, a we will all be looking for new homes. Even those, and even those will not be safe from the Borg, which is true. In I all see case. your point. If we work together, we can spread the risks of fighting the Borg, while at the same time creating a unified force that is more likely to succeed. Cardassia's odds of survival will be greatly improved if we add our strength to yours. Mm -hmm. Now, did you so have next something one's you going to be? To we're going to go ahead and do the Farah, which is, uh, to embed so Sarah balance can only be a preserved with the help of the Deferi. Maintaining balance with all things must be our primary concern. And of course, uh, you know this one. Yeah, automatic fail. Diplomacy, automatic success. Otherwise, this isn't about balance. This is about stopping the Borg before they simulate our worlds. My world is one of those at risk, but I cannot reject balance, even to save my home and people. The universe uses conflict to restore the balance when we move too far out of equilibrium. The Borg advance, as painful as it may be, is simply another adjustment. And here, the Borg do not seek a balance instead of in uh, instead of incorporating a person into incorporating the person to the collective. They dominate, wiping away any trace of who the, the person once was. Th uh, this furthers the the imbalance. It is one thing to choose to swim upstream against the current. It is quite another to drain the river because it is flowing in the wrong direction. The Borg do not respect the balance. We will offer what support we can to your fight. Now, did you now, have the other easy you one, to of course, is Starfleet. Ambassador uh, uh, is, which is Captain Sean Ferrish and cannot afford to, be, to give the Borg a foothold in the Alpha Quadrant. Starfleet will do everything we can to protect the Federation and its allies. However, there are too many drains on our resources and a limited number of ships and officers. It may be simply unfeasible for us to sign on to be the protector of the entire Alpha Quadrant. Besides, we need to consider the Prime Directive. There are limits to what we can do. So, as you can see, I'm already, uh, since I'm, I believe I'm rank 1 in Diplomacy, um, for Sean, I'm automatically able to do the Diplomacy, which is Starfleet's mission is to protect every world in the Federation we can. Uh, we cannot hope to do that if any of the civilizations represented here falls to the Borg. The other one is, you know, I'll call your bluff, Captain, um, which is automatic fail. The other one, though, is I thought mutual protection was one of the tents in, on which the Federation was founded. Under dire circumstances, Starfleet may be forced to pull back from protecting all life to a position where we can defend only the core worlds. I hope it doesn't come to that. If it does, however, the needs of the many must outweigh the needs of the few. And the Borg are a bigger threat than any of us can handle on our own. We need to work together. Starfleet recognizes the Borg threat in all life in the Alpha Quadrant. We've lost too much already. We cannot lose anymore. Eventually, we'll all need to put our differences aside and unite in opposition to the Borg or anyone else who sows chaos and destruction. We'll put an end to this together. Now, now the last you one. Something you wanted believe it or not, this one is. This is going to take a little bit longer than, uh, just a little bit longer because of the different. Because if I, if you're not rank four, you have to be very careful at what you say, especially to a Klingon. Be careful. Or in this case, you are dangerous. A Gorn. To insulting the honor of the Klingon Empire. 
Now, strangely enough, I'm, uh, I am able to do the diplomacy, which is, without your help, every civilization represented here could fall to the Borg. That would make the Borg even stronger. Otherwise, I'll give you. I'll show you uh, um, how how, uh, how you do it without diplomacy. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Okay, hey, when that happens. Anyway, talk about honor. Doesn't uh, your honor require you to fight with all your strength against an enemy like the Borg? That is. Do not first one. presume to know what our honor demands. The Empire's pursuit of honor does not mean we are compelled to fight other people's battles. Now, much as we, as somebody would say, this is your fight as much as ours, in, diploma, in diplomatic terms, is it honorable to hold back your full strength in a fight? Full strength? Ha! The might of the Klingon Empire can stand against the entire galaxy. Let them come. So, now, as much as we would do... You know, these two. The right one is, as an empire, you are strong, but is the quadrant strong without you? The Borg will, will not take sides. They oppose everyone. What does the empire gain by fighting at your side? We do not need to be hamstrung by your weakness or to put your needs above our own. And then, of course, our needs are shared. If any single planet falls to the Borg, it will only make them stronger. Ah, Starfleet won't survive without our assistance. It is good, then, that we see the merit in fighting at your side in this instance. It would not be honorable for us to reserve our strength while others go out to fight. That is a trick worthy of a Romulan. Very true. That's the last one. Let's take a quick recess to cool off. And that's funny. I don't remember anyone being scheduled to fly through the wormhole today. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the 2400. If you rem and for those who probably were guessing, this is the reference of the 2400. There's something coming out of the wormhole. Captain, it's a Dominion fleet. They're charging weapons. Red alert! For those who may be wondering, go back to start. Uh, go back to the. Uh, uh, I don't remember the name of the episode. Boarding the station. Go back the to Deep Space Nine. Look up the episode. We have to get out where. Of yeah, look, look up the episode where. It is time. Um, where, where Cisco and the Federation take back Deep Space Nine. Evac Protocol Alpha. Andrews, get everyone to shuttles. Prep the Defiant for launch. I'll... Blast it. The Jemadar have cut off access to ops. Karen, you'll need to coordinate the evacuation. We'll get the delegates to the docking ring, and then I'll try to join you in ops. Alright, so we can take either, um, lift to, to get, uh, to get them out of here, but, um... Yeah, so for those who, who may have already watched Deep Space Nine, this is what happened to those Dominion ships that were uh, that were in the wormhole that Cisco convinced the prophets to uh, help them with. 
this is what happens because um, you know they can't really the prophets don't believe really too much on you know destroying so what they did was they moved them that was just about just about dead well Now, if I had more people, um, I would be able to um, treat the injuries of this um, Bajoran officer here. And then there's another Bajoran officer right in there. Is that Bajoran or is he, or is there? Yeah, that, that person is a Bajoran. So if I had science for that one to do the healing and then the engineer, I would be able to get those officers and get another accolade. Instead, though, all I have is pretty much... All of this. And as you can see, I'm not able, I don't have uh, any of my um, uh, bridge officers in here because, in all technicality, the bridge officers, they are back at, um, they're kind of back at my, at the ship. So, they're on the Paladin. And I'm here. So yeah, pretty much we're fighting our way. Uh, uh, from here, you gotta fight your way over to the docking bay. Over to the docking bay to uh, escape. And yeah, wa and yeah, we, uh, when it, uh, when you're going through here, definitely watch out because there's a lot of subspace mines that the Jemadar love to drop on you. We got that assault officer, but we also got all these. Uh, pretty much just gotta try and you know defeat all the Jemadar as, as best you can here. I really need to try and get like more uh, better uh, armor and such here. We need to get back to uh, to on the ship. Oh, wait, I want to get the item. Was the item? Oh, uh, more catch so white. Okay. So to get on the ship, we got uh, we got of course you know just go to the docking ring, and from there, uh, this is where things get a little bit quicker, and here's where we we see the power of the, uh, of the paladin. So that was definitely a bit of a hole in so we definitely made a hole in their uh defense and their lines there. That's another accolade we can get here. But in order to get this accolade we gotta be a little bit um just a little bit quick. 
Now, I say that because, um, well, there are uh, four ships we have to save. The Belfast is one of them. Uh, there's also the Alpaca, which we're about to uh, reach here. Once uh, this uh, escorts down, I think another one. Yep, is the other one. The Opaka, Fletcher is going to be the ne uh, the next one, and then the Finda as well, and. Every and once you destroy the initial ship that uh, the they are fighting, uh, or when you get into a certain range, then um, two other uh, then uh, other heavy escorts will come in. They're always heavy escorts, no, uh, nothing more. But again, you gotta be a little bit quick because uh, if you can see, the Fletcher was at 38% hole. Finda's doing good on, on her own. Lost the Fenda. Yeah, major thing that I would like that I would definitely want to point out for everybody. Um, when you're going through this mission, you you definitely have to be a little bit quick, but use your AOEs. As well, just for the heck of it. Split it off uh, into pieces. It's a good thing too for uh, the multi-vector assault mode. I mean, because each multi, each different vector has its own little abilities and Captain everything here. Captain Kerland. Oh wow! Do you know that you and the delegates are safe? Jim Hadar has stormed the station, and we're losing critical areas. Andrews is just a little the bit on the short side, isn't everyone she? Everyone possible, but a few of us stayed to. Ah! Ah! Andrews, Andrews, someone answer me. What's going on? Captain, my name is Loris, and I represent the Dominion. This station, and all remaining souls on it, are now under our control. <laughs> Epic slow run. It used to be that she would, like, just walk. So, now it's time to warp out back to the, um... Oh, and we warp straight over to Bajor. I like how I warped out while the ship was uh, reintegrating. So, as we see, we will regroup, recover, and retake what is ours. The fleet is retreating to Bajor's, uh, to Bajor's space to protect the planet in case the Jemadar decide to push their advantage. So that was second wave, and in this, of course, we got several things to choose from. Uh, we got two weapons to choose from, and we automatically get all these. Which, I'll get those at a later time to let y'all know what they do. Uh, the next mission, of course, is of Bajor, which we will get that in the next episode. But in, before we get that, let's go ahead and just listen to what she We've has to say. We've evacuated everyone we could to Bajor, and we're setting up a base there to coordinate our counterattack against the Dominion. I won't lie to you, though. It's not going to be easy. We were caught completely off guard by Karakhan and his fleet, and the Bajorans are none too pleased to have house guests. We must balance the needs of the civilian populace with those of the Starfleet and Klingon forces currently on the surface. 
Starfleet needs all the help it can get planet side right now. Transport down to our staging area on Bajor. You'll find me there. Captain Curland will join us as soon as he can. Alright, and yeah, we'll get a little bit of armor that we can get um, from this as well, but this is going to be on, on the next episode where we had to, um, you know, look into DS9. Now, something I do want to also mention that I don't want, that I kind of did not like when the epi feature episodes first came out is, um, for when we got into this situation and everything, I had thought that maybe DS9 was going to be locked um, from anybody getting in, but in that, uh, but instead, DS9 was still open to the public to you know go in and you know art role play around and such. Which I thought, you know, when the feature episodes were coming out, uh, when they were first coming out, it would have been better if, um, you know, if we were able to, you know, be kind of a little bit locked out of the station. So that way, you know, we would get that feeling of this is something we ha we really need to retake and such. So there's that. But hey, you know, luckily, you know, we do retake the station. But that's gonna be within several other episodes while we go through the 2400 series, and you'll find out a little bit more about the um, about the Gemadar from the uh, from you know these. Uh, from this and we'll also get to see a little bit more about what's going what's going to happen in this because I'm almost wondering if they made any other changes to the uh, you know to these missions to kind of fit everything I'm not sure but you know hey we're in orbit the Bajor and we will be going we'll be beaming down the Bajor actually oh heck not what I wanted to do Uh, but yeah so yeah we'll be uh, so yeah this is actually let me actually go ahead and show y'all this is Hathen which some people may recognize this is actually the prime universe um, area of Hathen everybody probably remembers the um, mirror universe side of this place and we'll be exploring a lot of this uh, place here at Hathen and I believe there are Quite a few role-playing areas in here, but you know, like I said, we'll, we'll see more. That uh, I will show you a little bit more of this in the next episode. I appreciate everybody who's come in to you know look at this. Um, if I and uh, yeah, I got a lot of things trade. <laughs> I'll try to get the next episode in as soon as you know, as soon as I can. Otherwise, you know, hey, keep an eye out on my Twitch and everything, since I've been trying to do some live streaming. But for some reason today, live streaming hasn't been doing, hasn't been that great. I don't know why I'm gonna have to find out what's going on. But hey, anyway, appreciate everybody who's uh, come in and uh, joined us here today. I'm your host, the Crimson Phoenix, and y'all have yourselves a wonderful rest of your week.